Hey, what's up? Nathan here from PH Studios. Last series, we discussed a space shooter game, and we got that all created, and it's all ready to go. And these few tutorials, we've already done these before, but I haven't publicly released them. I'm going to redo them because if you've been in contact with me before and seen the website and the forums, there was a problem when we got into the later advanced techniques series. The whole before the newer ones, the ones from few, a few months ago, they were all very poorly done. So I'm going to redo some of the most important ones and this is just to gear you up for the tower defense tutorials. That way I don't have to spend the uh, extra tutorials in the tower defense series. I will tell you in this series, in this video, and I'm going to walk you through what we're going to cover, and in the tower defense series, I'm going to refer you to this video, and if you've done that, you've already created it and it's all ready to go, and you've already learned the information so you can use the sample that I provide for you. So the most important part, the what you've noticed I have done before is all my samples, all my games so far, there has been no sound. No music, no sound effects, nothing. In the tower defense, it's going to have a lot more sound. In fact, well, it's going to have more sound than nothing. But the sound on the tower defense series, it's going to have a few sound effects. I would say five sound effects and three songs. At least three songs maybe a fourth one so to gear you up for that I'm going to teach you how to play an audio file how to manipulate that and how to play it so there's two different ways one of those is to play it directly you drag the individual wave files or mp3 files or whatever and you load them individually and run them that way the second way is using a tool called XACT, X-A-C-T, and it's on version 3 because I'm using 3.1, as you can see here. We're still using 3.1. The tower defense will move to 4.0. So on 3.1, we're using XACT 3. Now, I, ha I haven't looked at XACT and XNA 4.0 yet, but it should be 3 still. But I'll have to look at that and tell you how it is. Alright, so this tutorial, we're doing the first option. It's to load up the files individually and play them that way. Alright, so if you go to the main website, phstudios.com, and on the right side, you have a content list. Let's go to the audio tutorial required files. As you can see, I did this last year, and these... Um, advanced techniques that I've done before they were horribly done I did a huge mistake doing it and something that my computer can't handle and it got way out of sync so that's why I pretty much stopped releasing them to the public halfway through and it's just very poor so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just walk through it as quick as I possibly can and Again, this is to gear you for the tower defense. Anything I'm doing now up until the tower defense, you can pretty much expect it to be in the tower defense game. So I'm just gearing you up for the tower defense. First step is audio. Alright, so we're in the uh, boss sound effects and music files. This is the tutorial required files. You can get the boss sound pack and that contains nine sound effects that will be in the tower defense game and then we'll have several audio music files again there's going to be at least three songs in the game maybe a fourth one okay so what we're going to do in this tutorial is I'm going to talk you how to play a sound effect and play a song just one sound effect and one song. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this line here for the tutorials. You will need the dark boss sound growl in wave format. 
So I'm going to download that. You want to download that. I have already downloaded I have the audio complete sample so I don't need to download that Let's see there we go all right so download that save it to a place that you recognize and you can either download the menu theme or the forest theme I'm gonna choose the menu theme so you can use a forest theme if you want to do something different again save that to wherever you can remember and where I did go all right okay now I already created a project called audio tutorial and what we want to do is we want to drag those files the wave file and the mp3 file we want to drag those into our project so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over here I'm going to drag the dark boss growl dot wave into the content portion and I'm going to drag the forest theme dot mp3 into the content portion so now we have our song and our sound effect and then we can close that window okay so now what we need to do is we need to get the uh, we want to hold the sound effect and the song in the appropriate class and in the appropriate object so the sound effect is of course sound effect and that is a sound effect object that we we'll use for the sound effect file and the growl is a sound effect now wave is sound effect now we need a song and this is forest theme. Now, Windows Media Audio or MP3 are music formats. Okay. So anytime we want a sound effect, it should be in wave. And anytime we have a song, it should be in WMA or MP3 format. All right. Now when I presented this sample, I wanted a way to demonstrate what was playing and general information about what's going on. And a key press in order to change, to make the sound effect come alive and pause the song and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that in this one too. And again, whenever you want to display something to the screen, you need a sprite font object. We've seen this several hundred times before. And again, what we want to do, keyboard input, we need a keyboard state object. And I like to do previous keyboard state and current keyboard state I like to do it that way because if you hold a key you don't want a thousand sound effects to play and stuff like that you just want it to play once even though you're holding it down you want it to play once so that's why we use the current and previous Now, to make things easier, I decided to use a string for the information. Now, I'll just call it info. And the way it makes it easier is because we can set up the string and just be done with that. Now, you can do it the other way. You can make a method that will return the strings that way. But, this way it creates a single string object and it saves things in the... Uh, memory management and stuff like that which we'll get into later on but for simplicity I just created string info at the very top alright now in this one we don't need to set the resolution to something high because well we're just really demonstrating the audio system we're just providing some information to the user so don't need a higher resolution that we usually have 
Now, in the initialize method, when the song is done playing, we want it to repeat. We want it to start again. Now, you might be thinking of, well, we'll just take the forest theme and let's do repeat or loop or something like that. We cannot do it that way. At least for this option. We can't do it individual files. We need to use the media player. That holds what song is playing. So we set the media player and the, its properties. Remember it's a class level. It's public static. So it's a class level that we can manipulate. So we can set is muted, is repeating. That's what we want. It's equal to true. And you can see what else is offered there. Media player dot game has control, active song changed, is shuffled, play, pause, move, previous, move, next, play, position, cue, state, stop, volume, all that stuff we can use in the media player class. So that's all we need in the initialize. Now the load content is where we actually grab these files that we see here and load them into our memory, our objects. So first let's grab a, actually let's right click the content folder. Let's go to add new item. Now that's out of the screen but there's new item there. Now let's set visual C sharp. Let's make a sprite font file. Let's just call it font. So font.sprite font, let's leave the defaults, and let's go back to game one. Now sprite font, the object, is equal to content.load. Now the class, sprite font, parentheses, quote, the asset name, which is just font, quote, and parentheses, semicolon. So we've seen this several times before. We're just loading a sprite font into the the sprite font file into the sprite font object. Now we need to do the same thing for the sound effect and the song. Growl is equal to content dot load. It's a sound effect. Parentheses quote asset name. If you want to know the asset name click the file and go to if you don't see the properties window here go to view properties window and the asset name is there you can just copy and paste the entire text in there paste it make sure it's wrapped in quotes and ending parentheses and semicolon now we need forest theme so you go to content that load bracket it's a song End bracket, parentheses, quote, force theme, copy the asset name, paste, end quote, end parentheses, semicolon. Now we loaded the song. We want it to play the second we load it. So uh, that's media player dot play. Now we play, we pass it the song we want to play. Force theme. Alright, so now that's plain. Unload content. Remember we just had all the stuff to null. Sprite font is equal to null. Growl is equal to null. And forest theme is equal to null. Okay. So now the update method usual course of action that we do is we update the keyboard states and make sure the game has an exit path so let's update the keyboard states previous keyboard state is equal to current keyboard state 